And I looked at him like, you do look familiar. We loaded these up and I drove home and I put them here and then it hit me. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the most famous YouTuber in the world that no one has ever heard of. If you're new here, uh, that would make you the third person to actually watch these. So thank you. And today we are working on a 1927 Model T Coupe. What we do. So if you want to have your car featured on uh, television or phone or whatever you're watching this on, give me a call and we'll uh, try to get you in here. Okay, if you don't know what these are, they are transmission bands. Not unlike a, a modern automatic transmission, but you got to use your foot to make it work. And we are going to be building them today. So stick around. Okay, welcome back everybody. We're moving ahead on the chicken coop. We're going to do some bands. The clicking you hear in the background is the new parts washer. And I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to do that. But I've got some some bits in there that need to be need to be cleaned. So it's got to be hot for them to come clean. I want to look at I want you to look at these bands. I think these were brand new. They're 70 years old, but I think they were brand new when this was parked because they're in excellent condition, except for the fact that they're 70 years old and full of crap, oil and and water. So, to get this off, <coughs> what I did was took the ear off. To take the ear off, you have to pry this down, this piece down, because it latches in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little latch that engages to keep it from sliding. It's a keeper, basic, basically. It keeps it in that position. So you lift it up and then it goes to the big holes and you can take them off. So let's do band number two, I guess. <clears throat> to take these apart. It's fairly easy. shame these got contaminated because like I said they, they, they look like they're brand new. This one's always fun. There we go. Yeah look at that. If it was clean. But we're doing everything brand new anyway so last step on removing these bands is to remove the rivets. So, cut them, they fall out. Maybe. Other ways to get from that side. Let's try this one. Probably easier this way. These are going to go back in that hot tank because this side is dirty too. We'll get them clean and then we'll put some new linings on them. These I start to grind down. It's the other way you can grind them down and make them easier to remove. It doesn't want to come off. One more. Okay, now, <clears throat> on 26 and 27 Model T's, you'll notice that one band is a lot wider. This is the brake band. They come apart the same. And when they 
don't cut the rivet. One more. This one also. You can actually see the spot where they put it on and they put the the loop in it. It's still there. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the cotton bands. But that's what they had. These look like copper rivets. The other ones were, were definitely brass. Maybe they're just dirty, I don't know. Yeah, I guess it's just dirty. Alright, let me clean up my mess, get these washed, and we'll go to putting them on. Okay, we got our bands all cleaned up, ran them through the parts cleaner. Looking pretty good. We got our band linings, I'm not sure which brand they are, they came in the car when it arrived. So see if we can figure out what, what's going on here. What do we have? Okay, don't chuck the drums in the lathe, which I'm going to do anyway. Rocky Mountain Machine Company. Rocky Mountain Machine Company, Kevlar Bands. Probably all the same. But there's a bunch of different brands. There's Red Hook. I forget the name of Iachino. The Iachino Brothers. Yeah, there's Red Hook. The Iachino Brothers, we used, used to send these out everywhere. Brand. They used to send them out in a paint can, which I thought was really, really cool. I am under the impression that the uh, Iachino Brothers, I think that's how you pronounce it, I, I think they passed away. It comes with teeny tiny. Okay, it comes with teeny tiny rivets that I don't like. So we got the long ones. I guess we can get rid of these now. The owner has requested that all parts that come off the vehicle go back to him. So he can have it save me space in the dumpster. Okay, so we have two thin bands and one thick band. So that's good. Now the way that I normally do these, and I've done them before on camera, so if you want to see that video, go look it up. As I take my vise, I had a piece of oak that I drilled a hole in to hold the punch. Don't know where it went. It's a body hammer. So there's the rivet that comes with the bands. There's the one I prefer. The reason I prefer it is very, very hard to peen these over. So maybe we'll try one. So what I want to do here, and I saw somebody else do it like this. The gap. I'm exaggerating it a little bit. But that is not what you want. What you want is the band to be just a little bit beyond. In this case, it's the part that was melted. And then on this end, we're going to put the ear back on to locate that one. But I hang them up here. Take the rivet. Take the rivet and put it in here. And we're going to do it so that the split is this way. 
Oh, toy. This will go in without bending. I'm already getting the sense that this is not going to cooperate. That worked all right. See, we got the rivet sticking out. So that's good. And then what I do, like I said, I had a, a board where I could just drop this in the board. I might, I might make another one. Okay, now we're going to put punch back on there. So, so you can see. I'm going to take my body hammer and we're going to carefully splay those out like that. <clears throat> I can see it or not. The reason I need the punch is this is recessed on this side. And we've hammered it home. Hopefully you can see it there. Where the tabs go that way and that way. <coughs> we're going to take this. And we're going to see how long it protrudes past. Okay. So on this one. I'm going to put a hump in the band. Set that to where we think it's going to be the same distance out from that here as that one was. Come on, just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to put that there. Let's see if we can do it with this little rivet. Show you the difference. of these and this is why you can't even see them you can't even hardly tell it's there you can use the anvil on the vise <clears throat> see if it works I'm sure it will other people use it be enough to hold it but it's not as pronounced as that one let me turn this light on maybe that'll help or maybe it'll make it worse but you see how much is sticking out to hold that as opposed to this one and there they're so small it's hard to use your fingers when you set them in Just keep going, I guess. Usually end up messing them up anyway. One or two. 
it happens. It's nice to have the extras. Now the last one I had to drill holes to get these to go in. Pop that one up. That's what happens. Let's try it again. I had a pair of forceps out here, but I think my wife took them. For crafts. Nope. That's two. We're going to start. Start having problems here. I wonder. Take a couple of those out because now I'm going to need them because I just ruined two and they don't give you any extras. Let's try it again. Try it with a little one. And if this don't work, we're going to have to break the drill out. that one even though it's a little rivet we got it and I did something just then off camera that I'm going to show you now I'll get another one set maybe okay I got a new toy we're going to use the new toy Worked well on the last one I just tried. Let's try it on this one. Using my foot, as you can probably imagine. Let's send it on there. Almost. It worked better on the short one. We just need a, a little more tapper. Tap, tap, tap a roo. We'll have this one set. I don't know, maybe with that machine I'll be doing the new. See now we now I'm taking that hump out. Maybe with that machine I'll be using the little ones. That worked really well. Try another long one. Make sure these things are anchored. If I can get it to work through the fibers without falling over. That'll be a no. Okay, let's try the short one again. With this machine, it might not be so bad. Stand up. Stand up. Let's see if this one cooperates as well as the last one did. I'm hitting the tripod. It's not easy to film this and work at the same time. Yep. Not bad. Not bad. I'm digging this new machine. Let's try this again. Okay, it's funny because when I was a kid, my grandfather used to take me places. And he had one of these in his garage. He had one in his garage. And I used to pound, used to, uh, cap guns. I don't know, if you were if you're my age or older, you know what a cap gun is. The little roll of red paper with the little pockets of 
powder in it. I used to bang off caps in it, and he used to take me places. I don't know where he took me, but we went, and we ended up in some guy's garage, and I found those on the back wall of the garage, and I wanted to play with them. So I'm, you know, I'm pumping the, pushing the pedal down, like I did in his garage, and there was two of them side by side. So let's take a look at these. And the ones that I used to play with, you know, I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was just garage stuff, and I was, I don't know, maybe five, six at the time. This one is for pushing rivets out. And it's got the hole so you push the rivet out and it falls on the floor. Now these are interchangeable. There's a rack up here for all different pieces. Okay, now that one comes out. This one, the mechanism's stuck. Now I don't know if it was stuck back then, if that's why he got two of them, but these are the pieces that that go up inside there and this is another one like the one that's in it that has a, a dimple in the in the front and then it kind of donuts in the middle and rises up ag again the edge this one feels like it's just a nipple in the middle and then it just splays out without the donut I don't know if you can see that on camera or not but there's a valley between this and this so anyway, back to my story. <clears throat> I used to play with these as a kid, forgot all about it, and I decided I wanted one to do the, the brake bands because they're miserable. And I went on Facebook looking for one of these, and the guy popped up. I remember, didn't know who he was. He says, I've got two of them, and I'll sell them to you. And so I went to his house. And I looked at him and he looked familiar. And he told me his name and it was his, his parents' house, his father's garage. And his father was about uh, maybe 10 years younger than my grandfather, who's uh, long gone now. Uh, I think his father's gone now too. And he says, I, I look like my father. And I looked at him like, you do look familiar. We loaded these up and I drove home and I put them here and then it hit me that these are the two that I used to play with when I went to that guy's house with my grandfather. So, cool story. We're going to get back to doing bands, but it was just funny that uh, I ended up with something from my childhood memories. Which is really, really cool. I don't know. It's cool, for, cool to me. Try another long one. These long ones might might be a mistake. These might need to be drilled. But I didn't have that rivet machine before. So, so maybe we are going to use this, the short ones. Let's we'll see. Not bad. See, this is the problem. I can't get him to stand up. Ah, oh, these things are miserable. Okay, there's one done, and we can put the ear back on. One brake band, done, and it's tight. Sometimes you need another hand, sometimes you don't.
Come on now. Never easy. Never easy. Maybe. Nope. This is how my day's going. This is how my day's going. Let's try a short one. Can't even get this in the hole. Wow, this bit's so sharp it won't cut wood. Get in there. I know, not supposed to use body hammer for that. I don't do body work, so. Alright, so what's happened here is the bit has closed up, the rivet has closed up. And I need some persuading to open up. I also want to turn this way. Maybe this will work. I don't know. And now I do know. Nice, except for one thing. It's not always seated. Go back to this method here to make sure it's tight, because it's not. It's tight now. And we got a good, we got a really good, good, uh, good grip there. Okay, we won't need this. We get to the next band so we can put the wood back in. Now there might be a way to use that to push these in on the other side, but I think it would require changing of these two, and I don't have another one, so that would be pretty cool though. <clears throat> if I could rig something up so it pushes it in and spreads it out all at the same time. Which maybe it was designed to do that, but I didn't get all the bits, so all I got was what you see. So we're gonna try and set the end on this one as well. We should go right to there. What do you think? Speak up, because I can't hear you. I'm really pleased at how well that rivet machine is working. It's making this a lot easier. It's actually making it so I can use the small ones. 
maybe you think These would go right into that fiber and not aggravate me like they are. Good grief. That one started to spread all on its own. Right here and here. Brand new charge battery. So I'm going to rinse and repeat here. I think you get the idea. I'll show you the end result after I change my battery. Okay, it's been a lot longer than I care to admit. We got them done. That little, uh, using my foot thing. Makes a big difference. So those are all set to go back in the car now. It's funny how the, the long rivets worked in here, but on these they didn't they didn't work as well. I ended up putting some short ones in. I ruined I, I ruined enough to do at least one of these. Well, it happens. Why well, you get extras? Okay, well that's it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.